Well, hello, everybody. This is Brother Ed. And I thought that I would spend a little time, maybe each evening or at least a couple times a, a week, and talk to you about some of the stories that um, had circulated for years around Bennett Academy. You know that I entered uh, the monastic life in 72. I made my first vows in 73. And I started a uh, 73, 74 school year full-time at the academy. Father Moore Deluhi, who was the uh, stationer or the one who ran the bookstore, gave that up and gave it to me. So between myself and Brother Columban, we ran the school bookstore. And if you remember way back when, um, we used to set up the cafeteria uh, as a temporary bookstore. And I would set up the books uh, in, in order. So uh, all the senior books were at the first table, then the junior books, then the sophomore books, and the freshman books. And we just kept moving things up as each day a registration was over. And um, this was uh, in, in the evening. Uh, I was setting things up. And um, it was probably the week before registration. And all of a sudden, I heard a baby crying. I thought, my gosh, where's that baby at? Why is there a baby crying? Now, we all knew that this was an orphanage at one time. And I used to hear, you know, some strange stories from Father Ronald, our principal. And if you remember Father Ron and Father Mel, Father Ken, Father James, they all lived at the academy. Um, they were the last uh, prefects before the school uh, went co-ed. And also, we didn't have borders anymore. But they stayed there because it was a way of kind of keeping an eye on the school. Uh, so anyway, um, I went out in the hall, and down the hall, uh, going um, east, uh, you would be going past the uh, mechanical drawing room, which at one time was a biology lab, then the bookstore, then there was another room. And in that room, uh, there was a uh, about a 12-foot long, 5 feet wide, 2 feet deep pool. Uh, that actually was when you guys were in high school, we used it as a storeroom uh, for um, for canned goods and things. There. The kitchen had that. But it, at one time, when, when, it, when we still had the orphanage, this is before my time, uh, I was told the nuns used to, when the kids would come in from the city, you know, coming for the first time, they would have to make sure that, that they were, um, you know, free of any kind of uh, diseases in any way. And uh, one of the things they used to do is delouse they would uh, kill the lice that were uh, was on kids so they wouldn't spread that to the other kids. And once kids get lice, they all, you know, you'd all get it. So they wanted to make sure that was all taken care of. So that was the room that the sound was coming in. Now, I couldn't get in that room because I didn't have a key. But I, I used to see what was in there when I was, you know, during the day. You know, the, uh, Betty in front of the kitchen the, who ran the kitchen, she used to, you know, she was the manager. She used to go in there all the time. And I used to stop and say hi to the ladies that were. Uh, and doing things there. Um, I don't know if you remember Roberta Musselman. She was there and a uh, very nice lady. And I can't remember the other ladies. Dolores. There was uh, quite a few, actually. Anyway, so the noise was coming from there. And, um, you know, at the time I was 20, 21. I'm going to be soon 22. And, um, you know, I was young yet, very young. And, uh, able to run if I had to. And and all of a sudden, the, the sound just kind of wafted up to the second floor. I could hear it. Then the third floor. So I thought, well, I am going to go and check this thing out. So I run upstairs. Of course, it's pretty dark up there. You just have a couple lights. And uh, the door to the fourth floor, the infamous fourth floor, was, was banging like the boom, boom, boom. And I uh, I thought, oh my God. Well, I took off. I ran down those stairs and ran back to the Abbey as, uh, as soon as I could get, get there and, and lock myself in my bedroom. So the next day I went back to just check on it and uh, opened the door, looked upstairs, and there was a window open, so it might have been a draft. But in any case, it really scared me. And, uh, and of course, we had horizontal and vertical tunnels in the school. They still have them. It was all for the infrastructure. And, you know, in those days, you know, people didn't worry about it. We were out in the country. So uh, George Possinger, um, who um, 
was the man who was in charge of of the school of the heating system he um he would leave the doors open you know he, he lived over there and um no doubt that probably maybe a cat got in you know cats will whine like babies crying and uh you know so i don't really know for sure but i'll tell you it was scary well that's enough for tonight i'll tell you some more stories in the near future sometime this week again have a good evening happy haunts and uh Tomorrow is my 70th birthday. Can you believe that? Wow. Bye.